All right, good day viewers. Welcome to today's episode of Made Easy Clinic brought to you by the Peak Construct for Higher Learning, aka the Peak Tutors. Um, in the last episode, we dealt with stoichiometry and what we talked about was balancing of ionic equations in acidic and basic medium. Today, we are simply going to look at um, determining the limiting reagent in a chemical reaction. Now, what is limiting reagent? Limiting reagent in a chemical reaction is simply the reagent that is first completely used up in a chemical reaction. What do I mean by that? Let's assume, I'm making an assumption this time around. Let's assume that two loaves of bread, two loaves of bread and three eggs, an assumption, don't forget, three eggs plus um, a piece of tomatoes, we make a sandwich two loaves of bread plus three eggs and one a piece of tomato will make what a sandwich how many sandwiches can i get from let's say 10 loaves of bread 10 loaves of bread um um 10 loaves of bread 18 eggs 18 pieces of eggs and them and them six pieces of tomatoes now you should know that since two loaves of bread and three eggs and one tomatoes will give me one sandwich or yeah one sandwich that means that what 10 loaves of bread can give me five sandwiches 18 eggs can give me six sandwiches and then six tomatoes will give me what six sandwiches now how many sandwiches can i get from these parameters i've been given obviously i'm going to get just five sandwiches because the bread has what has been used up completely now once any of the reagent stop is um, is used up the reaction stops there is no more product that's going to be formed because somebody in the reaction has been what has been completely used up so it is a limiting reagent in a chemical reaction that determines the amount of products to be formed because my loaf of bread has been used up completely here i can no longer get any sandwich so i can get what sandwiches from this parameter given that is one of um the way we started talking about what limiting reagents now as it is here it sounds very simple how then do we know how to calculate for limiting reagents in a chemical reaction now i'm going to use a question to explain this in calculating the limiting reagent for any particular reaction, there's something we have to know, the active mole. The active mole for any particular reagent in a chemical reaction, the active mole is giving us the calculated mole, the calculated mole over the what? Over the stoichiometric mole, stoichiometric mole. Now, I come again with my um, theory of sandwich. I said um, if two loaves of bread can react with what? With um, three pieces of eggs and a piece of tomatoes to give me what? One sandwich. That tells us that what? Um, this two, three, and one are simply the what? The stoichiometric moves. Now, I was told that what? How many sandwiches can I get from what? From 10 pieces of bread, 10 pieces of bread, 18 eggs, and then six tomatoes. Now, these are the parameters I will, I will give in. Now, I can just assume this to be the what? The calculated mole. Am I communicating? Now, to get the active mole, your active mole is simply what? Calculated mole over what? Over stoichiometric mole. And the what? The reagent with the smallest active mole is the what? Is the limiting reagent. What do I mean by that? For bread, I'm just simply going to say 10 divided by 2. That will give me 5. For egg, I'm simply going to say 18 divided by 3. That will give me what? 6. And then for, um, for tomatoes, I can say 6 divided by 1. That's 6. Now, who has the smallest active mole here? Bread. So that tells me that what? My loaf of bread, in this case, is the what? Is the limiting reagent. Now, let's bring that to now to chemistry. I'm simply going to use a question to explain this and then I'm very sure you are going to get the word, the logic. Now, let's say I have a question as this. I was given a question as this. Silicon carbide and abrasive is made by the reaction of silicon with graphite and this is the reaction. SiO2 plus 3C 
to give me SIC plus 2CO. Now, I was, I was given, I was told that if 100 gram of SiO2, if 100 gram of SiO2 and 100 gram of carbon are reacted for as long as possible, which one of these is the limiting reagent? I was given 100 gram, the mass of SiO2, the mass of SiO2 is what? Is 100 grams. And then the mass of carbon given is also what? 100 grams. The fact that both are 100 grams does not actually mean that what? They are just enough to what? To give out the, the product we want. Now, one of these is most likely to be the what? Limiting reagent. That's the reagent that is first completely used up. Now, you should know that once given a question like this, a very simple approach is to first calculate the what the number of moles from this equation given very much balance i have one silicon one silicon i have two oxygen i have two oxygen and i have three carbon and also have one plus two that's what three which means this equation is what is balanced the stoichiometric mole of this equation is just simply their coefficients when the equation is balanced so the stoichiometric mole for this equation for sio2 it is what it is one for carbon it is three for sil um, silicon carbide it is what it is one and then for CO, it is two. So these are simply the what? The stoichiometric moles. How about the calculated moles? The calculated moles, as it implies, is just the number of moles when you calculate for the number of moles of each of these that, what, that has been given to you. Now, all we have to do is to calculate what? The number of moles of each of these. Now, since we have been given their masses and then the mass of SiO2 and also the mass of what? Carbon. So all we simply need to do is to find their number of moles first. Don't forget, active mole is what? Calculated mole over what? Over stoichiometric mole. So let's find the calculated mole for what? SiO2. The number of mole of SiO2 will be what? The mass of what? Of SiO2 divided by what? The molar mass of what? Of SiO2. Now, from here, I've been given the mass of SiO2 to be what? To be 100. How about the molar mass of SiO2? Of course, you should know how to calculate the molar mass of what? Of certain compounds. I, have, I know that um, for SiO2, the molar mass of SiO2, silicon is simply 28 from your periodic table. That's the relative atomic mass for silicon. And then the atomic mass for oxygen is what? Is 16. But I have what? Two of it here. That's what? Two into what? 16. So 28 plus 32. That should give me 60. Yeah, 60 gram per mole. So I come back to this. The number of mole of what? Of SiO2, which is what? The mass of SiO2 over what? Over the molar mass of SiO2. So that was 100 divided by what? By 60. If I punch my calculator, 100 divided by 60, this should be 1.67, but let's confirm. 100 divided by 60. Yeah, I get 1.67. So this gives me what? 1.67 moles. Now, this 1.67 is simply the what? The number of moles of what? Of SiO2. That's the calculated mole for SiO2. We are going to do the same thing for what? For carbon. Now, the number of mole of carbon will be what? The mass of carbon divided by what? The molar mass of carbon. So that will be what? What's the mass of carbon given in the question? 100 grams and what's the molar mass of carbon or relative atomic mass of carbon is simply what 12 i don't have to put this now 100 divided by 12 this should be around 8.3 um, 100 divided by 12 yes 8.33 8.33 moles now this i have just done I have only successfully calculated for what? For the calculated moles. How do I now know which of them is the what? Is the limiting reagent? Is it SiO2 or is it what? Carbon. Don't forget, I told you that the limiting reagent determines the amount of product of what? To be formed. So if a question goes further to ask you for the amount of product that is formed, you have to first know the what? The limiting reagent. So it is the limiting reagent that must be related to the what? To any of the product. But that is not what we are in for today. What we just want to know is how to determine limiting reagents. Now, we move to look for the active moles. The active moles. Active mole of SiO2, active mole of SiO2 will be the calculated mole of SiO2 over the what? Over the stoichiometric mole of SiO2. What is the calculated mole for SiO2? 
The calculated mole for SiO2 is what? Is 1.67. The stoichiometric mole of SiO2 is what? Is 1. Don't forget I said the stoichiometric mole is simply what? The number of moles of a particular compound in its balance equation of what? In the balance equation of what? Of reaction. So 1.67 divided by 1.67 will still be what? 1.67. That's the active mole for SiO2. How about the active mole for carbon? The active mole, active mole of what? Of carbon will be what? The calculated mole of carbon via the stoichiometric mole of carbon. And what is the calculated mole of carbon? The calculated mole of carbon is simply what? 8.33. And what is the stoichiometric mole? The stoichiometric mole of carbon is what? Is 3. 8.33 divided by 3, 8.33 divided by 3 will be 2.78. This is what? 2.78. Now, the active mole of SiO2 is 1.67. The active mole of what? Of carbon is what? 2.78. Of course, it is visible to the blind and maybe even audible to the deaf that what? 1.67 has what? The smallest, the, the least active mole here. Now, because it has the least active mole, that tells us that what? SiO2 is the what? Is the limiting reagent. SiO2 is what? Is the limiting reagent. And that tells us also that what? Carbon is what? Is the excess reagent. Don't forget, I said, the limiting reagent is the reagent that is first completely used up in what? In a chemical reaction. And then, it determines the amount of product of what? To be formed. So if a question goes further to ask you that what is the amount of CO that is produced, or the amount of silicon carbide that is produced, all you have to do is to relate SiO2 to what? To any of these that is what? That is asked, and then you get your answer. That is simply how to what? Calculate what? The limiting reagents of any chemical reaction. First, know their active, uh, the stoichiometric moles, that's from the balance equation of reaction. Second, find their what, calculated moles. Then the next thing is to find the active moles. The reagent with the smallest or the least active mole is what is the limiting reagent. I'm very sure that this explanation has been um, succinct and clear. So please and please join us for what, for the next episode of Made Easy Clinic. Thank you for staying with us.